Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Dylan here. Well, we have a massive bombshell of a video today from Dan Bongino that I want to bring on my show. He just revealed the truth and asked a lot of questions about what actually took place in the attempted assassination of Donald J. Trump. So if you don't know who Dan Bongino is, he is an American conservative political commentator. He also served as a New York City Police Department officer, and he also served as a U.S. Secret Service agent from 1999 to 2011, all right? So he served for 12 years as a U.S. Secret Service agent, and he actually knows a lot of Secret Service members who currently serve. He also, I want to mention, he did run for Congress three times as a Republican. So he is a very active guy. He, you've probably seen him on Fox News or on social media. But he just released a video that I'm going to play here on my show. And really, I want to just dive in and uncover a lot of the stuff going on right now. Because this is not something that should be taken lightly by any means. I don't think, oh, it was just some 20-year-old kid you know, went up there and he happened to be able to get on the roof minutes before, even though people were shouting at the police and secret service that he was up there. He had time to get up there with a rifle. Apparently he had a tripod with him too. And he was able to get up there, crawl while people are filming him with their phones and saying, hey, 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 you can literally hear people shouting during Trump's rally. The Secret Service should have immediately, one, I mean, I'm sure they were on headsets, right? They should have got the word on that there's a shooter, and apparently there was word that they all got that call in. The rally should have been stopped. They should have, um, you know, covered Trump and then taken care of that situation, then proceeded on with the rally. Instead, the apparently, anyways, we're going to dive into it all. Dan Bongino, but before we do, we are going to read the Bible and pray because God comes first. Amen. Comment amen down below if you believe that God comes first. All right. Today, we're going to read a special Bible reading. It's from uh, the book of Psalm, and this is a Bible reading called Psalm 91, which is a prayer of protection. So we can all pray this together over our own lives, just as we, you know, continue our lives after this big tragedy, and thankfully Trump is still alive. Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler, you will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him, I will protect him, because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. And I truly do believe those words at the end there, it, where it says, when he calls to me, because we know Trump called on God. We all know that it was divine intervention, that God's life was spared. When he looked to the side, the bullet would have shot through his head had he not looked to the side. When he calls to me, God says, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. All those promises God gives us, and all you have to do is call to him. That's all you got to do, my friends. It's that simple. 
Okay, let's dive into Don, Dan Bongino. Let's bring Dan Bongino onto the show. Hello, Dan. Here we go. You're telling me the best technology you have was deployed and you missed a, a shooter 130 yards? Say it was 200 yards. The Secret Service CS team, Pete, the counter sniper team, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure those two guys are Secret Service. We have to remember that we don't always, when we go to New York sometimes with high level protectees, we'll use NYPD ESU counter sniper. So I'm not really sure they, either way, they'd still be briefed in. The question we have to ask is if that's the best technology we have, and we had a CS team up there with a shooter that, you know, we're trained out to a thousand yards in the Secret Service with the counter sniper team. How did they miss someone uh, at, at, at most, you know, one fifth of the way there? There's a lot of questions. Take a look right here. There's the shooter location. It's the largest building near the stage. The largest building. You have the Trump counter sniper teams right next to the stage. Don't you think they would have the biggest building on lock? It doesn't make any sense. And, and, and even worse, it's broad daylight on a white roof. So again, open questions here. Was there forward looking inter infrared deployed? Uh, was there were aerial support, drones, helicopters? Uh, you know, something happened to, if you go back and listen to the audio, I want you to listen to this um, after I get off here. When Donald Trump, after this tragic thing happens, you'll see the Secret Service agents. And by the way, I know some of those guys personally. I want, it takes a lot to run into bullets, divorcing the security failure. So Yeah, definitely. Although they did fail, they did after Trump was shot, which should have never happened in the first place. They did, the guys there did their job in the sense that they jumped on Trump. But, I mean, they probably all got walkied in. Hey, there's a gunman on the roof, and they didn't, I don't know. At least they did that part, you know, correctly, and they knew what they were doing uh, after the security absolutely failed. But you're gonna hear something if you listen closely. The, the guy mentions Hawkeye on the scene. He's talking about those two, uh, the black BDU with the tactical gear cat element, that two-man cat element, that stands for counter assault team. That's a secret service special weapons team, equivalent to our SWAT. So they're there, they all deployed and did what had to be done after the security fell. So I wanna play this, this footage really quickly, guys, uh, and just line, line it up, line up exactly what took place because we actually do have new breaking evidence actually wasn't even aware of how how I was pointing it out on my show but if you take a walk if you take a look at uh, somebody filming the gunman on Here. the roof where they saw the shooter So you can hear, and you can hear them saying, "This is they they they're literally pointing, making a video," and yet the same exact time you can hear Trump speaking in the background. This is during the rally. They're saying, "Thank you, Trump. Thank you, Trump." See right here, they're saying, "Thank you, Trump. Thank you, Trump. Thank you, Trump." You hear that's a very important marker chant because while the video of the that a, a literal passerby took on their phone. You can hear that chant going on in the background. And that was over around a minute at least before Trump got shot. We have millions and millions of people in our country that This guy right here, you notice, he doesn't even flinch. The guy with the hat on, the fedora, doesn't look like your average Trump supporter, by the way, just saying that. But, I mean, you know, Trump supporters do come in all shapes and sizes. It happened and even this woman, she's looking over. Apparently they're saying she, I believe it, it, it was her, if I'm not mistaken, has something to do with this all. The strongest border ever. She's already filming over there. Do you see her? She's already filming before the shooter. The guy's seriously concerned. He can tell something is off. You don't mind if I go off teleprompter, do you? Teleprompter. So he goes off teleprompter, pulls up the jumbotron, then he starts shifting his head so the shooter can't so, so yeah, track his face. I'm trying to explain that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is a wow. See? You guys are doing it. They're getting better with time. My guys. Take a look at that chart. Take a look at the arrow on the bottom. See the big red, red arrow, right? So that's what I left off. A lot of people.
people are saying this guy right here, very suspicious, he had no reaction to the to Trump getting shot. Watch him. Keep an eye on this guy too. The lowest point, and that comes right from the government services, comes right out of Border Patrol. Take a look at that. Right here, here we go. The They're all looking. Amount of illegal immigration ever in recorded history into our country. And then Here we go, guys. Looks over, boom. Looks for, looks straight. He's gonna turn his head right now. Boom. See? Look at this guy. Doesn't even go down. Apparent? Is it this? Is this the woman they're talking about? Still has this chick right here. Like this, and he would have still filming. Gone. She's the only one with their phone out. The only one who's not completely fearing for their lives, except for this dude. <laughs> this dude is like, eh, just another day. Touch but having that. said that, there was no reason for them to have to do that. There's only one entity out there that saved Donald Trump's life yesterday, and it pains me to tell you guys this. And you know what that is? It's Donald Trump. If he moves his head an inch to the left or right, guys, this is a really different show today. I mean, this is it's bad enough we have to do this show about this topic. Can you imagine what would have happened if Donald Trump did not duck? And I, looking at the stage there, I'm speculating, but I'm pretty sure based on experience, that the bunting around the front of the stage is probably armor. Donald Trump knew to duck. I mean, most, most people would. He saved his own life. That, that's just a fact. The evacuation did not go right. I mean, the rule with the Secret Service is cover the protectee and evacuate. The other rule is maximum to the protectee Minimum to the problem. Why minimum to the problem? Because you don't know that's the only problem. It could be a distraction. There could be another person in the crowd. Exactly. Another, there could be anybody else. Counter attack, or like, misfire, crossfire. There could be somebody else, another shooter. Don't jump on the protectee. You could be looking at multiple shooters. So at least that part, the guys there, you know, stepped up there. But the failure here is absolutely catastrophic. And I got to tell you, the Secret Service should be very careful. I can tell you and absolutely confirm from the horse's mouth, from multiple people, not just one. And I saw Congresswoman Waltz text this out before on X. There have been repeated requests to increase the security footprint around not just the residences of Donald Trump, but the body itself. And they have been rebuffed. Like I said, I... And if I were Trump right now... I would not be trusting the Secret Service. I would be hiring my own security team. This is no time to mess around. Trump is a billionaire. He can, he should invest. I know I'm giving Trump advice here, but it's obviously not his own fault. <laughs> this dude needs better security. This man's fighting for our country. And you know what? There was even a man in Congress, a Democrat who tried to strip Trump of his Secret Service protections just months before this assassination attempt. His name is Representative Benny Thompson. He mocked GOP criticisms of his effort to strip Secret Service detail. And he's not only, he's not just a Democrat representative, my friends. Benny G. Thompson Look at this. You will be shocked to hear this, my friends. He's a member of the Democrat Party. He served as the chair of the Committee on Homeland Security. So the guy who served for eight years, very recently, just ended in 2023, for eight years, this is the man elected to be not only serving on the committee, of Homeland Security, he was the chair, the head, the top man on the Department of Homeland Security. This guy should be fired. He tried to strip Trump of his Secret Service privileges. Give me a break. Somebody please, Benny Thompson, resign immediately. And then he has the audacity to share 
this message on Twitter. After all that, I am glad the former president is safe. My thoughts and prayers go out to everyone involved. There is no room for American democ in American democracy for political violence. I'm grateful for law enforcement. It's fast response to this incident. It's like, I know they're saying, oh yeah, don't call anybody names right now, but this guy is a complete moron. And these words, oh, I'm praying for you. It's like Mike Pence said the same thing. Mike Pence is a complete joke. It's like Mike Pence says, oh, my, my wife and I are praying for Trump. I suggest y'all do the same. Yeah, Karen and I, Karen and I are praying for President Trump and urge every American to join us. It's like, give me a break. This is the man, this is a complete hypocrite. This guy signed a multi-million dollar book deal, seven figure book dealing, book deal, talking crap about Trump. Okay, Mike Pence, like with all due respect, shut up. I can tell you actual quotes. The Secret Service directors completely failed and candidly should resign today. Kim Cheadle has failed Donald Trump and honestly failed Joe Biden too. He's the president right now. Where's the DHS secretary? I mean, th th this is, you're blaming it on manpower? So just to be clear. Well, the, uh, the chair of the, uh, the, uh, the Department of Homeland Security w literally tried to remove Trump's Secret Service. That's what uh, uh, he edited in 2023. We're a $4 trillion United States government, and we can't fork over enough money to keep our people alive. Literally. And then you're sending out tweets like, oh, this is the best technology we have. Really? To let a sniper 150 yards away from the potential next president shoot a piece of his ear off? <laughs> That's your victory lap? Give me a break, man. This is absolute flamethrower stuff from Dan Bongino. I want to just brief you on the drama here. Dan Bongino came out with a report yesterday that was verified by a number of members of Congress and reporters that the Secret Service has multiple requests from Trump's team for larger and better protection. Whoa. Dan Bongino, guys, dropped a bombshell. That's crazy. Ties Donald Trump. There, yeah, read it. The Secret Service, and I want you to look up U.S. Secret Service red ties Donald Trump. There, yeah, read it. The Secret Service was more concerned about protective agents around Donald Trump. If you think I'm making this up, go to your go to a left wing search engine. If you think I'm biased, go to go to Scroogel and put it. Oh, you're reading this story right now. They were more concerned about the color of the Secret Service agents' ties around Donald Trump, given the perception that a red tie was somehow. I've got red ties. You guys know that this man, Dan Bongino, I do believe he was the founder of that social media program, Parlor. I'm a Republican. It's nothing to do with it. I just like red ties. They go nice with white shirts. That was, that's an actual story. You see, you see it right now. I'm not crazy. This is what the Secret Service was concerned about. They put out, a, you know, a thousand tweets about all of this DEI stuff. Do I know that's related here? I, I don't. I'm just saying like there were, you have one job and only one job. Your job is keep the body alive, no matter what. Donald Trump, Joe Biden, Jill Biden, the president of Djibouti, it doesn't matter. That is your job. They absolutely, resolutely, 100% fail. Not a single excuse should be made. Not a single excuse should be attempted. This should be the subject of congressional hearings and investigations, because if they can't do this, and this is the best technology you had, then folks, th th there's no purpose anymore. This isn't the agency I grew up in. It's Whoa! This is massive, guys. I spent 12 years of my life there, and I'm telling you, some of the, I know some of those guys personally. These are good men and women, but this, this was an apocalyptic security failure. And don't ever forget, an uneventful failure is never a success. And the fact that Donald Trump didn't die yesterday is no reason for anybody to take some kind of victory lap. And before we start sending out plaudits, we better look and do a hot wash on this and find out exactly how abysmal this security plan was. Dan Bongino and completely devastating take is pissed down by Bongino. Never heard anything like it. Scorched earth. And you know what? They deserve it. They deserve it. You deserve it. Who gave the stand down order? This is the greatest question. Who gave the order to say, don't shoot? Because they were already pointed in that direction before the shooting happened. 
so they knew something was going on over there, the rally should have stopped. They should have, the Secret Service should have covered Trump as soon as they got word. The man who's crawling towards Donald Trump with a rifle. I mean, I'm not in the Secret Service. I know better than that. Gave that order. Why didn't this man take the shot? Why? Why? That is the question. Dan Bongino saying that there is no victory here. This is the greatest catastrophic failure he's ever seen and he's ashamed of the Secret Service and I, I gotta tell you, this is... So sad, my friends. And let's just hope and pray that Donald Trump is safe here on out. There needs to be some major changes around Trump's security team, whether he hires a personal security team, whether a group of individuals or a super PAC or whoever it has to be uh, 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 pays for that for him. Donald Trump, I mean, maybe there should be his team or, some, or, or his supporters like you and me. I would be willing to contribute to that fund if it means keeping him alive. Because that's what we're getting down to at this point, my friends. Donald Trump, he did not walk out of that rally without blood on him. He had blood pouring down his face. Absolutely the biggest in. failure yesterday. Even Mike Pompeo talked about it. Let's tune into him real quick. Thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Secretary. I, I want to start out first with some words from the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee just moments ago called this a security failure at this Trump rally and called it said of the shooting, how is it that someone could get on the roof with a superior position, with a weapon, and attempt to assassinate the former President Donald Trump? He then asks, is it just unthinkable, unfathomable? We need to know, is this a protocol failure? Is this a, a resources issue, he asks, or is this just a failure of those who were on site that day? For everybody who doesn't know, Mike Pompeo is the former United States Secretary of State. Mr. Secretary, you have had time now to analyze the facts we have right now. What conclusions have you come to? Well, Sam. He was also director of the CIA before as well. It's great to be with you. Um, I'm going to begin by saying the, the loss of life that took place. I pray for the family of the deceased and those that are still injured and, of course, for President Trump and his family as well. You know, there'll be lots of time to answer those questions. I think the, the questions that the House Intelligence Chair laid out are exactly the right set of questions as the way to frame what happened. It is undoubtedly the case that there was a failure yesterday. The fact that someone got a shot on the president, the former president of the United States at a rally, someone campaigning for president, um, suggests that you just didn't get it right. Now, whether it was systemic or whether it was an individual who failed to do their job yesterday, it's hard to know. Um, but make no mistake about it, we need to get to the bottom to understand not only how it happened yesterday, but make sure that something like this can never happen again. Exactly. And even Mike Johnson. Mike Johnson, Jim Jordan, the House, they are going to be launching a full investigation of the Secret Service, and especially that lady, that lady... Uh, what's her name? The director of the Secret Service, Kimberly Cheadle. The House will conduct a full investigation of the tragic events today. The American people deserve to know the truth. We will have Secret Service Director Kimberly Cheadle and other appropriate officials from the Department of Homeland Security and the FBI appear for a hearing before our committees ASAP. Kimberly Cheadle, that other guy, the dude who tried to strip Trump of his Secret Service, both of those guys and... This guy here, Dan Goldman, who said Trump has to be eliminated, all three of these guys should, be, should resign today. Listen to him. And he not only just said it, but he said it on Joe Biden's former White, uh, White House press secretary show. It's just uh, uh, unquestionable at this point that that man cannot see public office again. He is not only unfit, he is destructive to our democracy, uh, and he has, to be, uh, he has to be eliminated. And not only those three people, but you know one other person who I think is uh, really needs to think twice about what happened? 
is Joe Biden himself. Political discourse and debates, but it shouldn't be personal and we shouldn't be targeting people. I mean, look, President Biden himself said in recent days, it's time to put a, a, a bullseye on, on Trump. I mean, and I'm glad Mike Johnson actually went on mainstream TV to call out Joe Biden. It's getting out of hand, my friends. People are dying. People are dying and potential presidents, former presidents are in danger. Trump himself, and we need to protect Trump right now. Like Trump said, November 5th is the most important day in the history of our nation. And he said it's going to be the most consequential term if he ends up winning to save America, to turn, it, turn this mess around. So let me know your thoughts down below. Thanks for watching. God bless.